This painting holds a lot of secrets, like hidden characters, a so-called mascot, and all the 17th century gossip you can't handle. Before we begin, if you like debunking the mysteries of art, definitely hit that like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell. This piece is called The Night Watch by Rembrandt, but here's the shocker. This isn't a night scene at all. Yep, you heard that right. It's a daytime scene that got its nighttime look from old varnish? Talk about a plot twist. They only figured this out in the 1940s after cleaning it and realizing, hey, it's a sunny day scene. Since we've debunked that this is a nighttime painting, it's time to reveal the real title, which happens to be a mouthful. Militia Company of District 2 under the command of Captain Franz Bannock Koch. Sounds like something out of a law book, right? Let's stick to The Night Watch, because who has the time for that long title? Wait, what's this? Tucked behind some figures, you can spot part of a face with an eye and a beret. It's a bird, it's a plane. No, it's Rembrandt himself. Art historians have come to the conclusion that this is likely Rembrandt himself sneaking into his own work. It's like a Where's Waldo game, but in a classic 17th century painting. He's cleverly placed where it's hard to see him, making it a playful challenge to find him. This is a neat trick from the famous painter, encouraging you to look more closely. In fact, this guy was the Steven Spielberg of the 17th century, and his paintings? They were the blockbusters of their time. Dramatic, action-packed, and always a hit with the crowd. He had a thing for painting military scenes. Honestly, who can blame him? Everyone loves a good action-packed portrait with soldiers in fancy outfits, looking all heroic and dashing. As a matter of fact, Rembrandt's paintings are loved because of his mastery of chiaroscuro, the perfect balance of light and darkness. By using shadows, Rembrandt brought an incredible level of drama to the scene. The individuals depicted in the painting are so vivid and dynamic that they seem to come to life, almost as if they're leaping out at you, creating a 3D effect without the need for special glasses. This method effectively highlights every person in the artwork, emphasizing how light interacts with them. Looking at the painting, we notice that Rembrandt draws our attention to the captain and the lieutenant the most. I mean, just look at that spotlight. It's clear that they are above the others. These two are like the stars of a Broadway show, shining brighter than a diamond in a sea of pearls. Zooming in on the captain's hand, it's evident that it isn't just there for show. It's practically a character in its own right. More than just showing off a snazzy ring, the shadow of the captain's hand is like a tour guide in the chaos, boldly pointing out the Amsterdam coat of arms in his lieutenant's coat. It's his not-so-subtle way of saying, hey, check this out, this is who we're fighting for. Think of it as a silent yet powerful shout-out to their cause, all with a flick of a wrist and a strategically placed pointer finger. It's like he's in the middle of the action saying, Look here, folks, this is the real deal. Meanwhile, the lieutenant's spear is a key element of the dynamic composition. While the spear itself seems short, its shadow intriguingly extends beyond the picture plane, adding depth and a sense of movement. This effect contributes to the painting's theatricality and illusionism. Rembrandt's masterful use of light, shadow, and perspective enhances the interaction among the characters, transforming a traditional militia portrait into a vivid, almost cinematic scene. As we look at the soldiers behind the captain and the lieutenant, we see three musketeers positioned as if they're ready to spring into action. These musketeers play a key role in echoing the stages of the musket handling. On the left, garbed in red, the soldier charges his musket. In the middle, in an oak leaf helmet, the soldier fires. And on the right, behind the lieutenant, the soldier clears the pan. This sequence, mirroring instructions from Jakob de Hein II's 1607 Wampenheindelinge van Roher's Musketen an des Weisen, enhances the painting's dynamism. 
Taking a step back, we see how Rembrandt is such a mastermind that the poses of the soldiers are carefully chosen. Some stand tall, while others are in more dynamic poses, giving the impression that they could step right out of the painting and into real life. But who exactly are these men that make the Rembrandt paint them? The Cloven Ears were the real deal, responsible for guarding the city, policing the streets, and even putting out fires. They were key figures at big events like parades for visiting royalty. Their group portraits were a big thing back then, showcasing the most respected members in their guild halls, symbolizing the city's power and pride. Rembrandt nailed it with this painting. He was at the top of his game when he got the job to paint the Cloveniers Dolan, the hall for Amsterdam's Musketeer Company. But he did something different. Instead of lining everyone up in rows like in typical guard portraits, he brought them to life, with each person doing something that showed off their role in the militia. Hang on, if this is a painting about a militia group, why is there a little girl? This little girl is actually not a little girl. She's the Cloveniers' quirky mascot, a mini cheerleader with a bizarre choice of accessories. It's like Rembrandt threw in a dash of whimsy amidst all the military action, making you think, why did she bring a chicken to the battlefield? Well, the chicken hanging from her waist represents the Cloveneer's coat of arms. Now, come closer, because we're going to talk about a special shield, which was magically added to the painting after Rembrandt's death. Just kidding. It is unsure when, but this shield was mysteriously added after the original painting was completed. This late addition lists the names of the Cloveneers, almost like a secret bonus feature that emerged years after Rembrandt's era. It's like finding a hidden message in a time capsule, connecting us to the cloven ears of Rembrandt's time. Just when you thought it was over, this painting just keeps giving. There are more secrets underneath it. The Night Watch was once an even larger painting, with dimensions of about 12 feet by 14 feet. But in 1715, they had to cut it down to fit between the doors at Amsterdam's town hall. Imagine cropping a photo or cutting crusts off a sandwich. It reduces the original value of the item. So, this change is without a doubt a big mistake. It chopped off important parts of the painting and changed how Rembrandt intended it to be viewed. However, in 2021, the unexpected happened. After 300 years of showcasing the cropped painting, the complete painting was finally unveiled. Using the copy of the painting commissioned by Captain Francis Bannock Koch and AI Wizardry, Amsterdam's Rijksmuseum was able to fill in the gaps. This not only makes the painting look like an action movie poster with extra characters, but also adds more drama to it. So if you can't zip over to the Rijksmuseum to see it, just peek online. It's like having a masterpiece in your pocket. And remember, the next time you look at a painting, try to dig deep. You might discover something you hadn't noticed before. As always, if you liked our content, hit that like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell.